Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Great to have you here with me, I think. Let's just double check that everything is working. Uh, of course, we know that um, technical issues have, of course, not been the greatest fan of this channel. But nevertheless, um, we are, well, the sixth stage of the um, Paris Nice. And um, yeah, we've got a very hilly course, uh, well, uh, quite a lumpy lumpy stage today we've got a uh, few riders that have actually not um finished well they've gotten off their bike uh, one of the breakaway riders of yesterday ruben fernandez remember him he's gone off he stepped off the bike did not start or did not finish and yeah interesting really um a shame for a shame for coffee losing their third rider today uh the third rider overall they of course don't have tom boylin anymore and they don't have simon geshke best beard and pelton here not there and jordi jordi uh, waloop of bnb hotels belgian rider never heard of him of him before unfortunately no longer in the race as well uh valentin madoise is still in the race and he has the polka dot jersey of course and uh yeah fabio jacobson he's also abandoned the race so another list of abandonment or another whole host of abandonment yet again uh, not as many as we saw yesterday yesterday was absolutely incredible for their number of non-starters non-finishers whatever you want to say but yeah great to have five here um, of course uh, we I think we had about 70 people yesterday so that was good to see maybe we'll have that uh, coming towards the end we still have a lot of kilometers still to go in the race uh, to be exact, we've got 60.7 kilometers, two catch rise climbs, and one intermediate sprint as well, close to the finish. So it's definitely not going to be a hilly climb and uh, a hilly finish. We've got the the first big climb uh, they need to tackle. Well, the first of the two last big climbs is the Col de Pas de la Conel, and um, yeah, we well, it's the climb itself is 5.3 kilometers long averages uh 4.1 so you wouldn't think it would be anything too troubling for the riders let's just get that climb up as well uh on screen so we can just have a bit of a look closer look and uh there we have it so that's the penultimate categorized climb of the day let's get the other one as well uh the final categorized climb but yeah 59.5 kilometers now we still have that breakaway out the front which is Fedorov um, Altin Madouaz of course sweeping up the points Johan Jacobs yes there are still Swiss riders in this race Sebastian Grigna of Lotus uh, Belasol Julius Vandenberg of course his brother and uh, Marin he is uh, joined the uh, joined the um, world tour this year and then victor koretsky as well the french rider for bnb hotel so six riders one minute and 43 seconds that lead does not look like it's going to be staying there for much longer if we're honest but uh yeah it is all still to play for we'll see if the peloton on the final cast ride climb or anyone really uh throws the gauntlet down it, it would it would be great and yeah we still have a long time to, well not a long time but we still have a bit of time to go of course tomorrow um start in nice i will definitely be at the beginning start tomorrow so should get a video out for that and interestingly uh, i went with my uh, nice girlfriend down to uh, down the coast and we actually saw peter Sagan riding his bike and moments later met met theo trentin as well in a cafe very nice guy and there will be something coming up about Matteo Trentin following that exchange but yeah Paris Nice Matteo Trentin was actually in uh, Paris Nice and got off the bike after stage five so yeah uh, of course he's targeting Ma uh, Milan San Remo later on that will be very interesting and right now three of you have voted all of you believe uh, Primoz Roglic will keep that jersey of course so uh, we're still well we're still kind of uh waiting this is the calm before the storm or potential storm we don't know maybe someone's gonna try and and uh, throw it down on uh Roglic. but of course he rose to the occasion yesterday even though that he was exposed he didn't have 
and your teammates at one point. Uh, Rowan Dennis was their last teammate. Most of his train are in uh, Torino Adriatico training for that. So, yeah, it's um, he's he's a bit exposed to be honest compared to what we've seen him earlier. But um, yeah, he he's definitely living up to it. Is this part of his training? You will. I don't know. Really, no. Uh, we can only speculate. Oh, of course, uh, they're mostly using Torino Adriatico or Paranese as kind of tune-up races for the Spring Classics, for Torino Adriatico, uh, for uh, the Giro, or potentially even the Tour, just to get in that right uh, competition or that right form uh, for the various goals. But uh, yeah, do let me know where you're watching from, uh, who you think is going to win today as well. I think the poll we've got up right now is a bit simple. 57 kilometers now. Valentin Madois up there, 3.8 kilometers to the top of the climb for this breakaway group. Six riders, 1 minute and 40, 1 minute and 50 down to the yellow jersey group, of course, being controlled by Jan Bovisma. And uh, yeah, we can just see in our picture uh, Primoz Roglic in the yellow and Wout Van Aert in the green jersey, of course. Uh, Wout Van Aert going absolutely backwards yesterday. Was that part of the plan just to... Uh, well, when we saw Wout Van Aert in Torino last year, you would have thought that uh, he could have been up here challenging challenging for the win in Paris-Nice. But uh, it wasn't to be. Maybe he was just told, take it easy. And uh, he definitely did so, it seemed. But Jan Polanc, another rider to abandon. Another UAE team member is rider to abandon. So... Unfortunately, yeah, they lose another rider, and Joao Almeida won't have him to. Well, who knows? Really, we'll have to see what form uh, Joao Almeida is in when we come to the to the um, mountains. So, uh, um, but yeah, the Col de Turin is definitely going to be a huge stage. Um huge stage tomorrow that will definitely separate the GC and many people think that it is going to be Primoz Roglic still in that yellow jersey revenge from last year not being able to win it uh, we almost have 10, 10 people here so almost double figures and uh, yeah I do know it's a what is it a Friday afternoon Paranese is in the biggest race we are on the extra channel as well we're not on the main channel but great to have Ricky here with us and um, yeah don't be a stranger in the comments. We've almost got 10 likes, so if you haven't already hit the like button yesterday, we of course got a record number of likes for the extra channel. And uh, if I can just confirm how much that was, it was sizable. But at the front, we got Trek Segafredo for some reason. Wout Van Aert is up there showing that his bit of a break yesterday, yeah, just completely took the the foot off the gas really but yesterday 81 likes 81 likes on this channel so that that's really good of course we try and aim for 100 with the main channel every stream uh, usually get past it but 55.9 kilometers 2.8 kilometers for the front group of course we got the kazakh national champion in there and julius vandenberg of ef education is also one of the writers um yeah let's talk a bit more about the break as uh, sebastian Grigna, the Lotus Sedal rider, has gone out the back, so he's 32 seconds down, not being able to contest here at the front of the race. But um, Julius Vandenberg, that was the rider we were talking about. I'm not even sure if he is related to Marin uh, Vandenberg now. I think he is. Dutch rider, been a part of the SEG Racing Academy, and uh, first joined as a stagiaire for EF Education back in 2018. 2019 signed for the first full season. And in terms of results, he won a stage of the Tour of Poland last year. Second on a stage of the Bing Bang Tour. And that's basically um, the best results from him. Of course, he's 25 years old, so potentially have a bit more coming from him. Um, this year, not really anything to write home about. In terms of results, but a stage win in the Tour of Poland that is, of course, a very big. It was the last stage into Krakow. He was fifth in the individual time trial in the Dutch National Championships. So, yeah, basically, in a few years, potentially, in 27, 28, he he could be up there challenging for other things. 
But nevertheless, Intermarché Wanted Grugabert are making a, or whatever they're called now, are making a um, pres, well, a cameo at the front. Movie star in there as well. In your screen, it is Akea Samsik. Akea Samsik will hope to do something with Nairo Quintana tomorrow, that's for sure. 54.9 kilometers. And of course, Danny Martinez will want to replicate his victory. Of course, he's already won on uh, the Col de Torini. So, Movie Star. What will they do? Not really a team that we're thinking about in terms of this year's edition of Paris-Nice. They've, of course, no longer got um, Miguel Angel Lopez, Mark Soler. Like, they asked, uh, well, um, they, they've lost a lot of talent in recent years. So, they... I don't want to say they're kind of rebuilding, but they kind of are. But anyways, the list of non-starters for this race. Um, Baptiste Plankard, uh, not starting. Dimitri Grustev uh, for Astana, not starting. Marcus Holgard for Trek Segafredo. I didn't even know he rode for Trek Segafredo. That's a big surprise. When did that transfer happen? Of course, the Norwegian rider, formerly of Uno X Pro Cycling, choosing to change teams to check Segafredo, so that is a big surprise for me that he changed, not that he dropped off. Uh, Jasper Philipsen um, got off the bike as well, together with uh, Fabio Jakobsen, Aimé de Ghent, no relation to Tom, and Jordi Wallop as well, uh, as we spoke about, and Ruben Fernandez. So again, a huge group of non-starters here. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're starting to run out of riders in this race. But uh, Sebastian Gregna, uh, Gregna, uh, the Belgi uh, Belgian rider, brought back here by Trek Segafredo. Can Trek Segafredo do something here today? That remains to be seen. And Balke Molema potentially. Are they going to bring back the break before um, we get get to that uh, second categorized climb or the end of the second not or the last categorized climb on the day? Of course, there's an intermediate sprint as well. No one will care about that really. There are bonus points available, I think. But, uh, yeah, will be very fascinating, to say the least. What will happen here? Will anyone actually threaten Jumbo Visma? Or have they all kind of rolled over and uh, given up here and just hoping that potentially something will happen with him later on? But, um, yeah, do let me know where you're watching from. We're only 10 in the chat, so still a fairly small group. But it is getting towards the more interesting end of the stage. Almost 10 likes as well. So if someone hits, uh, hasn't hit already, make sure to hit the uh, like button. And um, good things will happen, probably. But Johan, Johan, well, if we discuss the break a bit more as we wait. They've got 1 minute and 47 seconds. Vlasov up here, just getting rid of a jersey to his team bus. Jumbo Visma, movie star, of course before I went off on a weird tangent, was the team that we were concentrating on. Who have they actually got? Matteo Jorgensen, of course, was up there yesterday, finished third. Uh, him and Frank uh, Bonamois couldn't quite bring back Brendan McNulty, so that was a bit of a shame for them. But uh, Matteo Jorgensen did move up in the classification up to 14th, two minutes and, two minutes and 25 seconds down. He is... 24 seconds away from a top 10. Ion Izagiri currently sits inside the top 10. So and Kyle Anderson is still 7th right now in the GC. Moved up 3 places. Of course, Wat Vinat absolutely di disappeared after what happened yesterday. Pierre Latour in 3rd place. Simon Yates 2nd place. Primus Roglic in 1st place. And Alexander Vlasov in 5th place. So Ugo Uld 11th, the highest North American rider in the race and also one the only israel stardom nation rider left in the race so uh yeah he'll he will have to do a solo ride to make sure to stay up there and yeah it's a shame for him really not having any teammates no one in at the dinner table other than potentially as one year the bus driver um 120 meters now uh to the top of the last second last uh, penultimate even Catalyzed climbing. Valentin Madouaz is driving at the pace at the front. No one's going to challenge him as he takes the most most points available. Fedorov, uh, the Kazakh national champion, he finishes second over on that mountain sprint. 53.1 kilometers to go now. 
So, it's getting closer now, the finish line. Of course, every second is it's getting closer. Now, Eric Quintana is currently in ninth place. Jack Haig is in eighth place. One minute and 35 seconds down for Jack Haig. So, and Kyle Anderson, that's quite interesting that he's managed to still stick up there. Danny Martinez, um, fourth overall. Is San Kyle Anderson looking to do something here? Who knows? But uh, Ilio Kesa goes out the back here, so... A bit surprised that he hadn't gone out the back beforehand. But Jumbo Visma, are they absolutely just going to control affairs today? Uh, we saw yesterday as well, Total uh, Energies also put a bit of pressure at the front. Oh, fun fact as well. Today, I actually saw Peter Sagan cycle past me. So that was quite funny. Of course, he's not in Torino or Paranis. It would be quite weird if he was now. Um, but Ineos Grenadiers, they are pushing on here. It looks like it is, who is that? That could be Amador. I think it's Amador. The best Costa Rican cyclist I know. Uh, if you do know of any better ones, do let me know. But at the back, we have a Bora Hansgrohe rider, and that is Sam Bennett just struggling to hang on here. But, of course, he isn't looking to do anything today, really. Just survive it. But, oh, we have a crash. We have a crash. A stumble uphill for 94. Who's that? 194. 94. What a, what a bizarre incident. Crash uphill. You don't often see that from the pros. Uh, Dorian Gondon uh, Go Don, uh, was that rider. What a strange incident. Just a bit of a crash happening at the front um, on a climb. Bit unusual. But uh, for whatever reason, uh, the chat doesn't seem to connect to the thing, so I might see if I can access it manually. Um, great to have you here, Sarah. Yeah, okay, I can see the chat now. Uh, great to have you here, Jeff Joyce, Alexa, uh, Sarah, Eric Brown. Great to have you here. Uh, so many of our regulars. Yes, I did see Peter Sagan. And to prove the Matteo Trentin story, I will share a photo as well. Um, don't worry about the race, 51.2 kilometers, the lead is decreasing ever more, one, one minute and 24 seconds, and um, yeah, will be interesting to see if the break takes it today, we of course saw Brendan Wignolte take it yesterday after a formidable attack for him, uh, timed it to perfection, but anyways, Matteo Trantin, that was what we were talking about, I was going to prove that I saw him today, um, uh, 15 in the chat, great to have you all here, and uh, thank you for supporting this little extra channel on this day. Of course, tomorrow it's going to be in Nice, I will be at the start line, so we'll see what fun and chaos I can try and cause there, but here we go, there's the <laughs> photo, <laughs> very, very huge, but there we go, proof that Matteo Trentin and I did actually share the same space in a cafe somewhere, uh, near Nice but of course he did abandon the race uh, yesterday so quite close to Nice so yeah but 53 50.3 kilometers now they're just uh, making their way down that penultimate climb of the day and uh, yeah as Ricky just said there uh, Jan Poland abandoned Doron uh, Gordon uh, of course crashed uphill which was a bit of a shame but, uh, yeah, Alexa said, I expect Wat Van Aert, uh to win today. He might lost time on purpose. Yeah, I think definitely, he definitely did lose time on purpose yesterday. You could see it. Um, you could definitely see it. Uh, it was, like, in, in no way could uh, would he be dropped so easily. 13 minutes or even more, was it? Uh, probably more at just taking it easy, getting rid of their backup plan here. But, um yeah, it looks like we've got AG to our... No, it looks like we've got Trexagafredo guiding the peloton down the bunch. It's a very relaxed day. No, it's Cofidis. 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 Those kits, it's really annoying with that white white shoulders because so many teams have it now. So it's like... It, it's really confusing when you're trying to spot who they are. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. So... Uh, great to have you all here. I think our poll is probably redundant, so I'll make a new poll as well because it's a bit bit a weird poll to say the least. Um, what should the poll be? Who will win? Who will win today? Um, the break's probably going to be caught, but I'll put the break 
um, break as a as an option as well. I don't think they are going to do it. Who tracks like a Fredo? So Chicone maybe? Or other? That is such a rubbish list. But uh, yeah, that's that's what we've got now. So uh, that's the poll we're going with. Bit, bit of a, a rubbish poll, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll think of different ones. If you have a suggestion to a poll, let me know in the comments because that one was terrible. Um, so anyways, anyways, uh, 48.3 kilometers, 1 minute 30. So it's stagnating around the 1 minute 30 mark. Valentin Madouaz, of course, the Groupama FTJ rider that uh, Ewan seems to be absolutely fascinated with. Um, try, and g try and get him on the channel, maybe. Uh, who knows? But um, yeah, Valentin Madouaz what do we actually think of when we think of Valentin Madouaz in terms of results? One Paris Bruges back in 2018, second in the La Drôme Classic, the race uh, not this year in 2019, the race that Jonas Bingo won this year. He's been eighth in Etoile de Bessege, uh, winning the overall, eighth in Amstel Gold, happening in 2019, fourth in the Paris Tours in 2020. Um, 2021 uh, won the Norm Normandy, but no real big uh, World Tour results. Finished 2019 13th in the Giro d'Italia, and um, in the Tour de France, nothing really to speak of. Uh, 25 years old, heralds from Brest, and has been with Groupama FDJ since 2018. So, yeah, see see what will happen here. Of course, his father was a professional cyclist as well from um until 2001 we see this a lot um with former pro cyclists um emulating their fathers winner of the tour of sweden sweden his father that's not really a race anymore but tour of sweden i'd love to see a race of tour of sweden last race back in 2002 and wow what a tangent that was anyways back to the race 47 kilometers left and uh yeah we've got Valtim Madouaz that was the the ignition point to this weird tangent um at the front of the race so uh can he win it potentially probably not uh with this reducing ever reducing margin to the breakaway at the front but yeah 48 kilometers in Trano Adriatico we have got five no we have got 75 kilometers I'm not sure my voice can uh, do two races again today, but uh, we'll see how I feel a bit later on. But yeah, it's um, it's calm before the storm. Mess Pillarsen could be a shot as well if he can make it over the mountain. Uh, who knows, really? He's been in good form, it seems, managing to drop, well, uh, outpower um one Wout Van Aert, all conquering Wout Van Aert, but Mess Pilsen, many people in Denmark are hoping he's going to be potentially napping a stage in the Grand Depart in the Tour de France later on in Copenhagen. Or well, not just in Copenhagen, it's going basically most of Denmark really, and uh, that's not really hard considering how small Denmark is in comparison to France. So yeah, 48.8 kilometers, the lead has shrunk down to now 1 minute and 19 seconds, so in only a few kilometers, they've already lost 10 seconds, courtesy of that hard pace put on at the front from Czech Segafredo. So it's all still to play for. 48 kilometers from Czech Segafredo, um, kilometers an hour. So you can see that the pace is fairly strong at the front. What are we saying here? Great to have you here, Anne, as well. Great to have so many familiar names in the chat. Is any team with a full complement of riders in Paris Nice? What a question. That is such a question because we've seen so many abandonments. Ugo Uld, the only Israeli startup nation rider we believe still to be in there. Um, but yeah, who's still in here with riders? That is a good question. Uh, Jan Bovisma, do they have all their riders? Um, Stefan Kreuzweg, is he still in the race? Yes, he is. Is Ron Dennis? Yes, he's still in here. Who would who would I think who wouldn't be in the race? Van Hoendoink, is he still in here? I think Jon Bevisma maybe have all the riders. Uh, Christophe Laporte, is he still here? Yes, he's still here. Fell outside the top 10 for the first time yesterday. Um, Mike Chernison, is he still here? 
Yes, he is. So it looks like the one of the teams with the mo with all the riders still there is Jumbo Visma, and of course that is primarily down to one Primoz Roglic in back in that jersey after last year. But yeah, Israel Premier Tech, one rider left. That is fairly strange. Great to have you here, Ondar. And um, yeah, how is Primoz Roglic looking? Well, we haven't really seen that much about Primoz Roglic, and of course that's like a unwritten rule of commentary or whatever you want to say if you don't see them it's a good thing so one minute and 16 seconds it looks like it looks like Jumbo Visma trying to stay out of this chase um I think someone I think it was Alexa that was saying that um he did it on purpose yeah uh what we probably could win today because he he sat up yesterday when it was getting a bit hard yeah 57 percent of you believe it's going to be a what we day Movie star, can they do anything? Yes, today they of course got a third place. Movie star, have they taken any world tour victories today? We've got 12 likes as well, so thank you all for the, contributing to that. 81 likes was our record yesterday. That's our new record on the Cycling Dane Extra channel. So great to see that. And um, yeah, we make our journey towards uh, 100 subscribers. Let's try and get there before potentially the Giro d'Italia. But uh, we'll wait and see. There's a lot of interesting stuff coming up on the channel. Of course, I we're back to this me not sharing secrets. But at the front of the race, uh, well, not at the front, at the front of the peloton, we have got Trek Segafredo. Who are they uh, working working hard for? Like, what have what do they know that we don't? Is it Mess Pilsen? Has he got good legs? Is it Jasper Stoven? Of course, yesterday we saw... Um, Quinn Simmons almost taking the victory for them in Trainer Adriatico, but um, unfortunately he was not able to stay away. And in the end, it was one Tade Bregaccia who rose above everyone else. Of course, there is a video on the channel about that. And uh, yeah, that uh, was interesting. Jonas Vingo, second place. Interesting for him. Good form from him. And Remco Venepol, uh, Tadej Pogacar showdown, one of the first ones, head to head really, and uh, Remco Venepol fourth place. But Jonas Vingegaard, yeah, I can't praise him enough. But Primoz Roglic in here now, yellow jersey. What will he do? I guess Samsic have also been looking like a really solid team. Definitely yesterday they they showed what they could do here. They've lost one rider in Capito. Uh, Connor Swift in here as well. Absolutely delightful guy. Met him at the Nationals last year in Lincoln. Uh, very, very Yorkshire accent, which is very nice. But Roglic is saying something here in the interview before the stage. Yeah, he just commented on what we uh, spoke about before, that they still have all their guys. So they're looking to control the race. Uh, so he's saying uh, yesterday was probably one of the most tricky finals, so he was glad to come through at the other end. But anyways, Ineos Grandiers are putting on the pace here, and Kofidis. Why are Kofidis working? Kofidis, do you not know your Kofidis? Um, Guillaume Martin, could they be lining him up here? Or potentially, well, Ruben Fernandez, they don't have any more. Ineos Grandiers, what are they looking for? They have, of course, got Adam Yates and Dan Martinez up there. But at the front, it looks like Vandenberg is moving. Vandenberg is uh, trying to get rid of his breakaway companions. Uh, the BMB hotel rider looks re reluctant to let the Dutch man, the Dutchman, go. Uh, but EF Education, of course, they want to try and get some kind of success here. It would be interesting to see if they could do something, but uh, don't hold your breath because the peloton are coming with a rampaging pace set on by Trexigafredo and uh, Kofidis for whatever reason. Ineos Grandiers looking to um, throw it back to yesterday. Yeah, of course, they had this, have this incredible record domination in uh, Pyrenees. I think it's one of the, the most successful one-week World Tour stage races. See what I did there? Put a bit of a caveat on to make it a bit uh, less... Uh, more favorable to the conditions what I what I was thinking of but yeah nevertheless uh, I just have to say thanks everything we've we've got 16 people here great to have you here I know it's a weekday I know it's an afternoon or wherever you are in the world of course um, so I'm really appreciate you joining me here and I've, I know it's the extra channel as well 
But we are slowly growing it, and uh, there will be an interesting video about a certain Matteo Trentin tomorrow. So, uh, tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow. I don't think I'll have time to finish it today. So, uh, that's coming up. Um, lots more interesting stuff coming up on the main channel as well. And, um, yeah. EF Education's rider has been brought back, Van der Berg, so it doesn't look like it's going to be his day today. Subscribe to the channel as well, if you haven't already, because then your name will flash up, and we saw that yesterday on the stream, and it will be there forever. It will be, be there in this stream forever and ever to the end of time. Um, so, yeah, if you want to see your name, unsubscribe and subscribe again, and then you'll see your, your name flash up. I think we saw Ricky do it, and Paddy as well. Paddy, I don't think, is here. Ah, uh, what should I say? Ah, uh, ah. Uh, Irishman, uh, I, I, I don't know how to say it, like a uh, chief Irish fan. But Cofferdews are driving it at the front, and who are they working for? That is a question. Anyone, any takers, who are they working for? What are you doing, Cofferdews? Have you forgotten that you don't have a sprint, like a, uh, a hilly sprinter here? You are you don't have Mess Pilsen in your team. You don't have... What are not in your team? So why are you putting on pace? We saw Guillaume Tam move a bit on, uh, on him. Uh, while well, tried to gain some seconds yesterday, it didn't quite happen. But yeah, what can they really do? That that is a question to be asked. I'll just try and get the chat up. As for some reason, the window isn't allowing me to get the chat up. So I'll just try and get the chat up on the manual way of doing it. But it is interesting to see Kofidis actually try and flex their might here. Uh, of course, we're used to Kofidis being this team not quite hitting the mark. But they, yeah, they they look like they can do something here. If you're wondering why there's a picture of Matteo Tantin, this was earlier, actually a few hours ago, in a cafe somewhere uh, near Nice. And he just happened to sit there. So, um I feel sorry for my girlfriend because I was like, we are meeting him. And she was like, no, don't don't disturb him. And I was like, no, we are saying hi to him. And uh, yeah, he was very nice. Great to have you here, TBO as well. And uh, what is Alexa saying? So no snow for tomorrow's stage. Ooh, snow, snow. That's an interesting thing. Um, of course, I just had the comments disappear from me. So let's see what we've got. Uh, Eric Brown, great to have you here as always. Uh, if I could, I would give 81 likes all on my own. Superb effort as always. Thanks, Eric. Uh, what are you saying as well? That epic random rant a few minutes ago with Matteo Trantin uh, picture are worth at least a dozen likes. And uh, what are we saying as well? Paris needs only one kilometer distance. They might catch the group. Yeah, I think I think it's over. Valentin Madouaz is going out the back here. 10.4 kilometers to the top of the final catarized climb. 41 seconds now. And um, yeah, I don't think it's going to be the day for the break. So anyone who's voted for the break, I feel sorry for you. Ricky just saying there as well, Groupama FDJ, we were talking about who, which teams actually have a full roster still in this uh, Pyrenees. Because uh, we've seen so many non-starters, non-finishers. And uh, Julius van der Berg is going out the back as well. And it looks like it is Johan Jakobsen who's been training the best in the winter season. As he is dropping the other riders. Lotto Sudal are at the front of the race. Matt Holmes. No, Matt, Matt Holmes, the former polka dot uh, jersey wearer in this race. The conqueror of Wollonga Hill. Last time we raced in the Tour Down Under is attacking off the front. Trexler Fredo working out the front. Is it Mass Pilsen or Julia Ciccone they're thinking of? But uh, Matt Holmes there just attacking off the front. And uh, we'll see how much he can get off um, off the front. But uh, Alexa, did did it show up for Alexa? Um, try again, Alexa. I'm not sure if it worked. The alert should work. Um... I think it should work. But anyways, if you have a second account or whatever, try and see if it works on that. Uh, maybe it doesn't flash up if you've already subscribed. But what are we saying? Uh, <laughs> Alexa, Coffee is probably confused. Yeah, we've seen a few of those teams a bit confused. Um, uh, hashtag movie star. A movie star in your screen, this. But Matt Holmes has passed uh, the current... The current... Uh, Polka dot jersey, just looking at him here, gazing. Sam Bennett has managed to, well, he managed to stay with this 
uh, favourites group quite a while, but 37.9 kilometres for him. Uh, uh, not not for him. That's definitely not for the front of the group. They still have 42 seconds. So Johan Jakobs, uh, I think the only Swiss rider left. Do we have any confirmation on that? Do we have Stefan Bissinger? Uh, no, he's gone. Stefan Kung, is he still in the race? Let's just see. But a lot of riders have cl climbed off. Yeah, Stefan Kung is still in the race. I can confirm that. But um, yeah, a few of the Swiss riders... Uh, getting off their bike, Sylvan Dilia. There are a lot of Swiss riders, just as a uh, random comment here. Of course, it used to just be uh, the likes of Matthias Frank, the likes of Fabian Cancellara, um, Martin El 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 Elminger, who were flying the flag for the Swiss, and who else? But um, yeah, there, there's a few few nations who've got quite a resurgence of riders in the peloton. Col Colombia, of course, huge crop of uh, Colombians in the peloton right now uh, but at the front of the race BNB Hotel the rider um, uh, Kor Koretsky and Jakobs are at the front now Julius Vandenberg looks like he's not giving up he's about two three seconds behind this leading duo but nine kilometers to go now for this uh, breakaway rider breakaway riders to the top of the um, the final categorized climb on the day, of course, there is an intermediate sprint coming up after the the long descent, and then we'll have to see if it will be another breakaway day. I don't think it will be, but Matt Holmes, he is 28, 29 seconds behind them, so the Lotto Sudal rider, could he potentially get a win here for Lotto Sudal? And Lotto Sudal, Caleb Ewan, of course, taking a victory. But can you think of any other victories that we've had from Lotus Adal in terms of this year? Nine victories so far. So I feel like I've been a bit harsh in the Tour de Alp Martin Matiem. Uh, or the, what was it called? Uh, I think it was called the Hautwa ha ha at some point. Um, they had the victory of Caleb Ewan and Tim, Tim Merlia. And uh, Caleb Ewan, of course, took a victory in the Saudi Tour. And Maximum, Maxim Van Giel, uh, of course, took the overall uh, and stage fourth. So, a bit harsh of me saying that uh, Lotus of Zidal haven't done anything. They have certainly done something this year. And, uh, yeah, we've got almost 30 people here in the chat. Just a recap uh, of what's going on. We've got a, a breakaway up the road. The reason why there's a picture of me and Matteo Trentin there in front of you, that's because I saw him in a cafe today. And there'll be a video on the Extra Channel tomorrow, um, probably in the morning. But um, Trek Segafredo, very, very eager to get more success after Mess Pilsen. Uh, they have lost a rider today, uh, Marcus Hol Holgor. So uh, Sara, unfortunately, one of the Norwegian riders, one of your countrymen, has um, gotten off the bike. But Valtim Madouas has been caught by the favorites group. So job done for the polka dot jersey uh, on that La Plia bike. He goes out the favorites group. Jan Bevisma, of course, still has that full set of riders. Rowan Dennis, absolutely imp in impressive yesterday with his solid ride. Um... We Bahrain victorious, of course, haven't got a full set of riders. Uh, Gino Madea is no longer in the race, so big loss for Jack Haig. So, yeah, 81. Remember, that is our new record on the channel, so if you haven't already, hit the like button. Uh, I should have put Mass Pilsen as one of the options. Very unpatriotic of me. Uh, but 40% of you believe it's going to be a Watt Van Aert victory. 40, another 40% believe it's going to be an other victory. Why did I put Chicone? It should be Mass Pilsen. Uh, but eight kilometers to go now. Um, is Mass Pilsen still in this bunch? You just have to get over that big lump, and uh, then good things will come to you if you know how to sprint. Wild Van Art, of course, is going to be a big danger, but Mass Pilsen has already beaten him in this race. So, yeah, um, Wild Van Art. Matt Holmes is coming up the rear as well here, so. 9% right now. Uh, we lose uh, Ineos Grandiers rider, but it is Luke Rowe. So, well, at this point, you would think Luke Rowe wouldn't be up at the front. He's such a good road captain for Ineos Grandiers. They're all also losing number 44, Ethan Hater. Ethan Hater would be would have been a good shout for today. To, for today, maybe, if he can stay in the bunch. He's got a good sprint on him. 
Uh, Omar Freire up there, um, of course, won stages in the... T did he? W I think he did win a st stage in... Uh, no, I don't think he did win. He came second in uh, the Tour de Yorkshire stage, and he let his teammate take the victory, as DS, uh, Dimension Data at that time had a 1-2, a famous 1-2. It was a former Sky Rider. Um, the Belgian Rider. Belgian Rider. What was his name? Tour, Tour de Yorkshire winner. What was his name? Belgian rider. If anyone knows, bonus points. But at the front, Trek Segafredo and for, uh, strong pace there. Stefan Kreuzberg on his wheel. Rowan Dennis up there. Primus Roglic in the yellow jersey and the green jersey, of course. Wout Van Aert. Wout Van Aert, of course, has already won the green jersey and won ASO uh, stage race. No, not the Tour de France, but the Criterium de Dauphiné. And uh, he did so in his first ever edition, if I'm not mistaken. Of course, the follow the the year after he crashed out, unfortunately. But yeah, interesting, 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 interesting um, finale coming up. So uh, we'll see what happens. And uh, yeah, almost forty of us here in the chat. Matteo Trentin, new friend of the channel, perhaps. Who knows? I didn't get him to say uh, you're watching the Cycling Dane channel, but uh, yeah, TB is just saying that. Uh, Tim Wellens in Mallorca as well. When can we expect the first attacks? That is a good question. And um, what are we saying here? Something noticeable as well. Watmanot has not ridden this season yet on the Cervelo R5. Uh, he's only ridden on the S5. That is a good question. Boom! There we go. Bonus point goes to Alexa. Serge Pals is the correct answer. Uh, well, that I can remember. Um, gold star. Gold star. I'll, I'll put it in the chat so it's there forever. Uh, so, yeah. We'll do more questions. More silly questions about things. But... Um, yeah, we've got two more stages of uh, Paris-Nice left tomorrow. They're called the Torini, which starts in Nice. I'll make sure to get some footage or something at the start of the stage. I need to first find out where on earth in Nice it's going to start tomorrow. Uh, and if you haven't already, try and get yourself to Nice, to Maton, to Monaco. All this region is so wonderful. And um, a bit of a gem, I would say. So wherever you are. Austria, Norway, Czech Republic, France. Well, if you're in France, you definitely should be in Nice if you haven't been already. America, anywhere, come to Nice. Maybe you should, should uh, have a giant meetup next year for Paris Nice. And uh, yeah, we'll have to see what happens today. That was a weird, uh, weird tangent. But um, yeah, the Peloton, they have reeled back Julius uh, Vandenberg. So unfortunately, EF Education fans, easy post even. Uh, doesn't look like it's going to be your day as the Peloton, or the favorites group. It's not really a Peloton when it's reduced down. I think there are more riders behind them than in front of them. But Matt Holmes, he's about 20... No, that's not true. He's less than 28 seconds. He. He, he's visible behind this leading duo from Movistar and BMB Hotel. And uh, it looks like he will be joining them. So we're going to have a Swiss, French, um, British allegiance at the front of the race. Two World Tour race, uh, uh, riders and one Pro Continental rider. And uh, 25 seconds is what's all separating uh, the, f the front of the peloton. But I think we need to start changing this poll because I feel a bit annoyed that I didn't put Mas Pilsen on. So let's get um, the Dane on. Of course, he's not been on the Cycling Dane yet. Have we got any association with Mas Pilsen? No. Uh, no association with Mas Pilsen on the channel. So uh, that's a bit of a shame. Um, but of course, we do have a lot of other Danish riders on, on the channel. Jonas Vingegaard, Niklas E., uh, Matthias Jorg and uh, uh, Matthias uh, Norskol of Movie Star. We've got who else? Um, Andreas Kroon of Lotto Sudal connection here because the uh, Lotto Sudal are in the breakaway. Uh, Mikael Kabel, who unfortunately retired. Uh, who else? Julius Johansson, who's uh, now a world tour rider with Intermarché. Fali Rodenberg, who's also a world tour rider now with DSM. 
after both after their interview so i'm not saying anything but maybe that that was one of the reasons and uh who else jonas wingergo has been on the channel twice and who else who else I, I can't remember there's there's a lot of them it's almost easier to say who hasn't been on the channel but 33.7 kilometers left now 24 25 seconds 5.3 kilometers and uh, Trek Segafredo are still putting the pace on at the front behind them. They have got Jombo Visma lining up with all their riders they still have in the race. Akira Samsic up there as well. So it's all still to come for. We are 19 likes. 81 is our record as of yesterday. So if you haven't already, smash that like button. And good things will happen, probably. So uh, new poll, I think, is definitely warranted here. So... Um, who will win will win the stage we will put mess pill no yeah mess pillerson mess pillerson uh okay what van art um ethan hater i'm not sure if ethan hater is gonna last all this way and then we'll put other because then it's a bit more fair because we've got three diff We've basically got three different options from three different teams with the other option as well. So I think that is very um, nice. But Kes Bowl is in here. So was that a mistake by me? Kes Bowl is in here. The winner of a stage last year at Paris-Nice. So did I just do a big mistake here? Uh, when is the time of the TVG of Denmark? Uh, TVG. Kaspar... Uh, Eskrain to come on the channel. Ooh, that is true. Kaspar Eskrain is a good shine. Oh, yeah, true. If we continue our Danish procession of uh, riders who've been on here, Miguel Honore was actually the first rider who accepted an inter interview with me. So, big up, Miguel Honore. And uh, Brian Holm, of course, absolutely legend in Denmark, has also been on the channel, the sports director of Quickstep Alpha Vinyl. And uh, Mikael Merko has not been on the channel. Um,. Who else can we think of? Um, yeah, but 4.2 kilometers now, 26 seconds. 4.2 kilometers to the final climb. Of course, we got a new poll now, so make sure to get involved in that. Uh, I've discounted the chances of the breakaway. Sorry, Matt Holmes. I don't think it's going to be your day today. And uh, yeah, it's not looking promising for them. 50% of you already believing it's going to be a Watt Van Aert victory. No one putting their faith in Ethan Hater as of yet. I need to vote as well. I'm going to vote for Mess Pilsen, of course. Be a bit loyal. Can we think of any other Danish riders I've had on the channel? Hmm. 41 people here. If you're confused, why is there a picture of the guy talking and Matteo Trentin on the screen? That is because met him in a coffee, coffee stop today and also saw Peter Sagan. So uh, Matteo Trentin, of course, was part of this race early on. But um, stepped off the bike yesterday. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of these riders, why would they put themselves through these mountains when they're going for Milan San Remo, etc., etc.? Um, they've kind of put their miles in. They they maybe are just having a bit of a recovery before the big goals of the season. Uh, of Well, M Milan San Remo probably is one of the biggest goals for Matteo Trent this, uh, this year. So we'll have to wait and see what happens there. Uh, can he actually do something in um, Milan, Milan San Remo this year? Would be interesting to see. Um, so, uh, should be good. Um, Trek Segfredo still putting their faith in, we think, their Danish all-rounder of Mess Pilsen. Already beaten Wout Van Aert once this uh, race. So, uh, why not do it again? And uh, Kes Bol definitely could throw a spanner in the works. Um, uh, preview. So, um, yeah, 31, well, less than 32 kilometers to go now. A few of you putting your faith in Ethan Hayter's, Ethan Hayter's um, corner, of course. Uh, he did finish, I think he finished top 10 on that stage victory that... Mess Pilsen took, if I'm not mistaken. Um, let's just double check that I'm not telling you lies. So, uh, as always, it looks like we have quite a few people in the chat now. So, great to have you all here. Um, of course, we're going to be here. F well, I will be here in Par for Paris Nice. 
currently streaming from Nice in the hotel room. Um, and uh, tomorrow, of course, we'll see what we do. Uh, of course, I will be on Cold Dares for the final day. So that will be quite an interesting day. Uh, streaming from the final final climb, I think, before they get to Nice. And um, could work out well. Could be a disaster. But, yeah, hopefully it'll go down. Well, we'll, we'll do a video anyway um, about it. So... There's a few funny videos coming up on the main channel. I won't spoil it because I'm so bad at spoiling things. And um, yeah, still haven't got that big American interview that I promised you guys. Seems like the PA of this guy just doesn't want to play ball. It's a bit annoying. The bureaucracy um, from some of these, uh, the, the kind of the layers around the riders. Because when you meet the riders, they're happy, cheerful and all this. But uh, all the press offices and things you have to go through is can be quite annoying but i digress trek segreiro still at the front 2.2 kilometers from the top for the breakaway of course not the favorites group 29 seconds is what they have 30.5 kilometers from the finish and of course we have got an intermediate sprint coming up as well we've got 25 likes on the stream 81 is our target julian bernard is the rider um driving affairs now and if you haven't already make sure to subscribe to the channel um great yeah as uh, tbo said so sagan and trentin yeah i saw sagan for maybe five seconds as he whizzed past us on his bike um and um yeah holmes uh, looking to take more kom points as ricky said there on yeah that climb that i won't butcher the name of um so when we get to the top of the climb, we'll have to wait and see, we'll wait and see how many points um, he will take. It is a categorized one climb, so uh, Holmes, of course, looking to try and get himself back into that um, that um, what what should I say? Uh, wait, am I just telling you lies again? No, it's a categorized two climb. Sorry, eleven kilometers in total, four point four percent. So it's not really that interesting but um what is interesting the inter intermediate sprint is definitely not on a flat it has a bit of a kicker 1.2 kilometers 6.5 percent so i mean we saw in uh treno adriatic no we saw on the first stage let's not forget that um the absolutely huge uh consequence that climb had and that was 1.2 kilometers as well bit steeper at 6.9 percent but similar climb of course the stage was a bit different but um could we potentially see Roglic do something here today on that climb uh they're all a bit well they probably are a bit fresh but uh they might be a bit t uh, fatigued at the end of the stage uh they look like they've been going quite quite uh, easy and uh yeah Ricky as he said that when when is the catch gonna happen um, 1.2 kilometers. I think that could be a good poll for future streams. When will the catch get uh, get uh, caught? So, um, w when will the catch get caught? When will the breakaway get caught? So, 24 kilometers, uh, 24 seconds now for the breakaway group, and um, we'll have to wait and see if they can do something. But one kilometer from the top of the climb, Matt Holmes is looking to take the points here, the maximum points on the catch rise climb. Where was he yesterday? Was he just fatigued? He wasn't up there. Let Valentin Madouaz just hoover up all those points. And uh, yeah, why didn't he mark the the, the race today? Uh, Tibio saying, I almost met Alberto Contador in 2008 at a hotel in Belgium. Sadly, they didn't allow me and my dad to meet the riders. But at least I saw the buses of Astana, Quickstep, Rabobank and all them. That is so bad. I think that's a shame. We were talking about it before, around the riders, around the teams. Wasn't even a uh, certain virus going around in 2008. So uh, I th feel like cycling needs to be a bit more humble as well. It's a very fragile sport. We, uh, Yeah, of course, everyone on the stream, we're all fans of cycling. And I, I just feel like you need to give something back to the fans. It's it's us that give our time, our, 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 yeah, our time to the sport. The, yeah, so... Be a bit nicer. Be nice to your fans. If yeah, that should be the message to all the pro cyclists and the pro teams as well. But Yumbo Visma, they are guiding the uh, favorites group here. It, it doesn't look like the pace is too high here. It's still quite a sizable group. It's not strong out that much. And um, Walt Van Aert is riding a third wheel. Is he going to be the riders challenging for the victory today? 
less than 400 meters now to the top of the climb for the breakaway group they've only got a 14 second 15 second cushion of this favorites group so the pace is still going high enough dsm are raising the pace here so is kes ball feeling good here kes ball the dutch rider who could potentially take a stage victory once again in paris -Nice. And uh, what are we saying here? Eric Brown. Oh, next time you see Trentin and Sagan on the same day, remember to invite him uh, to the Cycling Dane Extra Cycling Dane group. Uh, yeah, I think that that should definitely happen. Uh, TB is saying, at four years old, I even practiced Spanish for a signature for Alberto Contador. I mean, oh my God. Like, that just makes it even worse. TB is saying that. Um, oh, no. I think... Pro, well, uh, out of out of the pro cyclists that I've met, is there anyone who's been not nice? I think Nairo is the only one I can be a, a bit annoyed about. We were at stage two, Paris Nice, and uh, I was surrounded by a whole host of Colombians, courtesy of my girlfriend being Colombian. Um, and uh, yeah, Nairo didn't even wave to them, didn't even say hi or anything. So yeah, a bit of a shame. So um, be nice to your fans. That's all I can say. Uh, pro cyclists but anyways at the yeah we don't want the culture of football the arrogance associated with footballers but uh anyways we'll just get a screen grab as the peloton looked like they are going to be catching the breakaway out in front so the days are numbered now uh but matt holmes does take the points so uh we'll wait and see what the virtual classification is there so uh yeah 27.5 kilometers all back together well not really because there's a whole host of riders out the back or not in the race anymore but uh trek segafredo mess pilson jasper stoyman are those going to be the riders that we're looking towards or is it going to be kes Bowl potentially taking a victory well van Aert could be challenging as well took a bit of a rest day yesterday this is going to be an interesting finish to say the least of course we have got that climb 1.2 kilometers up to the intermediate sprint bonus seconds available so uh yeah that will all be interesting if you haven't already subscribed to the cycling day extra channel let's try and get this to a thousand subscribers if you haven't shared it with your friends mom whatever sister um cousin your mateo train um i don't know where i was going with that uh make sure to do so yeah just confirmation matt holmes takes the points at the top of that climb as they make their way down the descent now but uh, Stefan Kuhn has a mechanical at the back, so the Swiss rider is not going to be in contention for the stage today. So it's going to be interesting. Can a puncher potentially get up the road as well? Who knows? And uh, 55, uh, 555 subscribers we have right now on the channel, so 555. Um, yeah, this channel had like zero subscribers really at the beginning of the year, so kudos to everyone who's subscribed uh, for sure. But anyways, consulting our poll, 25% of you have voted. And um, your favorite as of right now is Wout Van Aert. 31% of you are voting for Other. So let me know if you have voted for Other, who do you think is going to win? So 53 people in here. If you haven't already, make sure to hit the like button as we try and beat our, our record of uh, 81 likes that we achieved yesterday. We have got 25 likes right now. 25 kilometers left coincidence maybe but a b and b hotel uh the b and b hotel rider is just staying at the front of the peloton of course it is nice to kind of um just guide yourself down so you can pick pick your line down the descent and you you're not um forced to follow another rider's line so uh yeah it's going to be interesting this intermediate sprint 1.2 kilometers will it have a big change similar gradient to what we had on stage one that absolutely blew the race apart courtesy of that three man three up three up time trial by Jumbo Visma at the front it's not going to be a three up one uh well with Christophe Laporte because he's no longer in the front end of the group if I'm not mistaken I don't think Christophe Laporte is here um um correct me if i'm wrong so um lots still to happen on the stage 
But Trek Segafredo, they are smelling a second ever victory in Pirates Nice. Of course, it was their first ever victory. Um, well, no, first ever. Was it the first ever victory? Yeah, I think it was the first ever victory for Trek Segafredo, which is quite surprising in Pirates Nice. But uh, yeah, pa <laughs> Trek Segafredo. Do you associate them really? What do we associate when we think um, Trek Segafredo? Falcon Molimer, Ness Pilosen. Vincenzo Nibali. Um, Vincenzo Nibali always goes to Trano, doesn't really go to Paris Nice. So, um, but yeah, they are still, well, we've got DSM pushing out the front. They still have Sean Carl Anderson, another Dane who hasn't been on the channel. None of the Carl Anderson brothers have been on the channel as of yet. Um, I Yeah, I should get in touch with Matthias Skelmulter Jensen, who of course finished second. Was it second or was it third? I think he finished second on the final final stage after Nido in the Tour de la Province, but managed to finish third overall. Um, very young rider and potentially the future for Danish cycling. Um, yeah, one of one of these many. Oh, Alexander Camp, another another track cycle rider. I think he's actually from the same town as where my mum uh where my mum's from. Well, no, where my grandparents uh are from so of course Denmark's very small so that's not really that hard and 23.4 kilometers uh, Sebastian Lander is from the same town uh, if you don't remember Sebastian Lander he rode for BMC and then he was kind of spat out the back but speaking of Sarah Kyle Anderson seventh overall he is a rider putting pay, uh, putting pressure at the front is he just training for a Milan San Remo attack here of course the Poggio coming up so yeah, San Carl Anderson, solid rider. Uh, didn't quite live up to expectations in the time trial. But yeah, DSM still searching for a podium finish or a victory on the World Tour this year. So is it going to be San Carl Anderson? Is it going to be Kess Bowl? And is this the best way of doing it? Having Kess Bowl sit in and then they're not really doing it. How big is the peloton? I think we've got about a 30, 40 man peloton. So it's not... Um, not the biggest, yeah, as TV was just saying there, another Danish rider you can interview, San Carl Anderson. Um, that's for sure. What I was saying before, Wat Van Aert, Contador and Boonen uh, were my favorites. Bo Tom Boonen, mid peloton, waved at me on the mountain in the tour. Uh, and I'll remember that forever. I never met Contador and only saw him on the TV. Um, yeah, okay, that that's a very nice story. Oh, speaking of nice guys and... Uh, cycling heroes Andy Slecht is my cycling hero icon whatever and uh, yeah met him once with my mum in his shop in Luxembourg absolutely nicest guy on the planet and um, yeah I was a bit starstruck when I met him um, my mum said to me but yeah Andy Slecht absolute superstar and that's how you want when you meet your heroes you want them to be nice humble everything and uh, just so nice but so and Carl Anderson at the front pushing the pace 64 kilometers an hour down this descent and the peloton they'll have to do something if they don't want to see this TT rider disappear off the road with the victory and the DSM team car are gonna go absolutely crazy here this could be a dream scenario for them have Kiss Bowl in the mix potentially for minor places and Carl Anderson and take the second Danish stage victory of uh, the Paris Nice, the 80th stage victory, uh, 80th, um, uh, 80th edition of Paris Nice. What about Frank? I've never met Frank Schleck. He's probably nice as well. I don't know. Uh, never met him. Uh, but if he's as nice as his brother, he he definitely will be nice. So San Carl Anderson trying to take. Uh, famous stage victory, of course he has, if I'm not mistaken, taken a victory in Paris Nice before. Let me just uh, fact check myself so I'm not telling you lies. Um, of course, some of the commentators on various platforms should fact check themselves as well. Because uh, they are very annoying when they just say things and don't check themselves. But uh, here on the Cycling Dane, of course, extra. Uh, it is exclusive, you can tell me when I'm wrong. But yeah, he did take a victory two years ago in 2020. Sam Carlson, of course, has been on the World Tour since 2016. 27 years old, really coming into the the more mature, any the the ripe age in terms of normal 
cyc pro cycling rules uh, with the exceptions being Tadej Pogacar, Remco Evenepoel, Tom Pickock, etc. But Søren Karlsson took a victory in 2020 ahead of Maximilian Schakman, of course, who went on to win the whole thing. Uh, Schakman was actually in a Danish sandwich on that day. Uh, yesterday we saw an American sandwich with a French rider, but that stage, stage four on that occasion, uh, Maximilian Schakman was behind Søren Karlsson and Kasper Eskain was in third place on that time trial stage. But 19.1 kilometers, <coughs> 81 kilometers and 87 kilometers even for Sean Count Anderson coming down this stage. And he's well and truly got a huge gap between him and the favorites group. They will have to try and do something here. Uh, Jumbo Visma, will they care? He is of course up there in the GC. He's seventh overall. So it's going to be interesting this. Very, very interesting if he can stay away. How long can he maintain it for? And so Anne Carl Anderson, was he a bit bemused that he wasn't included in our... Uh, what are we saying? Eric Brown, did you see the uh, feature on Andy Select on GCN Plus? No, I have not. That is very bad. Uh, I will make sure to make a note of that and check that out. Thanks for that, Eric. Uh, what are we saying as well? I might have met a very young Rowan Dennis at my friend's birthday at his house because he, back in 2011, he was a Rabobank rider. And my friend's grandfather was a crew member of Team Rabobank. Oh, that's nice. He's now working for Uno X. Yeah, think about all the, like, the soigneurs, the, the stuff behind the scenes as well. They kind of travel team to team and, yeah... 18 kilometers to go now. Trek Segafredo, are they still going to be pushing on at the front? The peloton has been strung out quite a bit here. Julian Bernard, the rider who had been doing a lot of work um, out the back. So the the peloton has split up a bit here. Yeah, San Carl Anderson, definitely a, good, definitely a good move from him. But I'm not quite sure. It, they, I think they're showing the back end of the favorites group because... There's no Roglic there, so it definitely can't be the front group. Uh, not the front group, but the favorites group. But San Carl Anderson doesn't really care about that. He's storming ahead and could potentially get the first victory in the books for DSM. And DSM, of course, yeah, not not had the best um, record of keeping riders. Tom Dumoulin disappearing, Marcel Kittle disappearing. And, yeah, John Dagenkopf coming back. But Trek Segafredo are pushing at the front here. They want another Mess Pillarsen victory here. They want a second taste of glory here at Paris-Nice. Can they do it? Who knows? Who knows? But San Carl Anderson versus the uh, Trek Segafredo boys. Jumbo Visma are just keen to sit back here. They don't want to do anything, really. Uh, Ricky saying, um, yeah. Uh, Sean Carlson has a 10 second, yeah, 7, 10 second lead. Uh, who knows how accurate that is right now, but Sean Carlson, he does have that intermediate sprint coming up, 1.2 kilometers, 6.5%. Can he m maintain this gap to stay away? Um, that is a question. Will it happen? Who knows? Um, but it is very, very interesting. If you are just joining, 60 of you here, if you're wondering why the man, uh, the, the commentator talking, myself, and a picture of Matteo Trentin is there, a recap of early on today. Met him in a cafe. He was originally in this race, but I think he stood off, got off his bike yes, uh, yesterday. Very nice guy. Speaking of being a nice pro cyclist, he seemed very nice. And uh, yeah, Matteo Trentin. Can he be, is he one of the favorites for Milan San Remo this coming week? Um, not this week, but the next weekend. And uh, yeah, oh, we've got Gudu uh, and Ball off the back. So maybe that is the reason for the attack here. Kes Ball. Um, yeah, can. But it, oh, it's very close now. I think San Carlos is going to be caught here. I think San Carlos Anderson is going to be caught. We are sharing in the comments, if you haven't already, who have you met out of Pro Cyclists and were they nice? Did you like them? Um, yeah, let us know. Share. David Miller is someone I met. Seen him all the time on ITV. Thought he was going to be arrogant. Turns out he's one of the nicest people in the world. So uh, don't judge people by how they act on TV is the story there. So, yeah, uh, Peter Lundenberg, Berger, I've seen that name before. So, uh, Alexa, I will look him up in a moment. But uh, it looks like 
Stefan Kreuzvik is out the back of this group. But uh, San Karnison unfortunately has been broke back, so it's not going to be a San Karnison victory. So that's a shame. He's not going to get his first victory since 2020 in Paris Nice. But he is very aggressive. He has been showing really aggressive form. Did so in Milan San Remo as well. Um, Anderson is taking risks. He's off the chain. Oh, uh, oh yeah, true. David Godou, yeah, out the back. Unfortunately, he's not being having the best week. He'll just have to re reprogram and come back stronger. But interesting fact here. <laughs> If he finishes, it will be the best finish from him because he's only been in Paris Nice one other occasion. Jasper Stuyven is in here. Mess Pilsen, which one of these two are they going to be going for? This duo seem to be a tandem locked together. So who are they going for? Omar Freyle in here as well. Have they still got Ethan Hater in the group? Um, will we see any reactions on that intermediate sprint? False, uncasterized climb. Uh, that is the question here. It looks like, is that Alexander Kirsch working for the Trek guys? But uh, yeah, uh, Andreas Lechnerson, the rider from Tromsø, uh, former Norwegian um, national time trial champion. It looks like he is out the back, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Kess Bull is out the back as well. So DSM things going from better to worse unfortunately it looks like they are not going to be featuring at the end of it so yeah Fe talking about uh, nice riders Tobias Voss of course who's been twice on the channel and is the current road national champion for Norway and national time trial champion have also um, has also been being on the channel and is very nice i'm sure he's going to be back on the channel at some point so um do let us know where you're watching from as well who you think is going to win today if you put the other uh and uh yeah exactly what eric said let's see what david du godu can do today he definitely can't do anything unfortunately but 13.3 kilometers to go we are of course awaiting that uh, 1.2 kilometer on Kasparov's climb up to the intermediate uh, sprint and uh, I don't think it will be much of a sprint between any sprinters but yeah can we see potentially Mass Pilsen taking another victory Mass Pilsen of course is good at climbing don't let this weird anglophone propaganda um, persuade you that he is a pure sprinter as I've heard from so many English commentators. He is an all-rounder who can sprint. He can time trial. He's won time trials in the past. He's won the GC of the Tour of Denmark. He's also won the Queen stage and the Tour of Denmark as well. Admittedly, it's not a huge climb, but it is a kicker. Kilsvai, uh, we should have a video at some point coming up on that road. It goes up to 22%. 40, uh, they're going 56, 59 kilometers at the front now. Trek Segafredo really pushing the pace and uh, controlling affairs. Ineos Grande is the second team on the road here. 12.2 kilometers. It will be very, very interesting. Get your, get your, uh, your, um, what shall we say? Your takers in. Actually, we should put, um, we should put like the chat up again. So it appears on the, in the stream menu if you haven't already and you want to see your name flash up make sure to subscribe as uh, that's how that appears but let's just get the chat uh, visible as well not anything really happening in the bunch um, so and Carl Anderson did do a late attack did look like it was going to do something but unfortunately he was brought back by the annoying Trek Segafredo right now but uh, Trek Segafredo uh, doing all they can to uh, get Mess Pilsen in the best part of possible ch uh, position to potentially win another uh, victory. 69 of you watching, so that's great to have all of you here. If you haven't already, hit the like button. Get involved in the chat. How are we doing for our likes? 81 is our record, of course, uh, courtesy of yesterday. And 33 is what we've currently got. So let's try and get to at least 50. So 17 of you, if you're watching, hit the like button. Good things will happen. Subscribe to the channel. 
and uh, you won't miss out on the Matteo Trentin video coming tomorrow morning. Um, so uh, yeah, that will be fun. We will, I think we will have a feature video from you and tomorrow as well on the channel. So 11.1 uh, kilometer to go now. Czech Zofredo still controlling affairs at the front. So it's getting very close. And uh, yeah, if you haven't already, check out our podcast. Give that some love. Um, yeah, uh, getting getting better with the podcasting. I, I kind of like the Paris Nice wrap-ups uh, with that little jingle at the beginning. So uh, 10.9 kilometers. We, st we are at this kind of... Um, calm before the storm like a a proper well could be a proper storm who's going to make the moves um here rolling rolling uh, uh, over that intermediate sprint are we going to see anyone uh, potentially get involved i think our chat isn't actually coming up in the stream because for whatever reason uh, the, the uh, youtube live or the youtube streaming isn't quite working so it's a bit of a shame it's been disconnected so yeah it's a shame but uh it will come back hopefully tomorrow uh tomorrow we'll see what i actually do we i will be at the start so uh we'll get some videos of the tech and um that should be interesting just to see some of the riders bikes but um yeah in terms of uh we we will of course do the st stream tomorrow because uh, the cold de Turin is very far away from uh very far from uh nice so I think it's better to be here with you guys and then actually uh somewhere in between the Col de Torini and Nice. But nine point nine kilometers, as uh Ricky just said, less than five kilometers to the intermediate sprint. It is going to be interesting. But it looks like we are getting a bit of movement. Uh the riders, there has been a split. Is there any of the big riders who've been caught out? Um let's see, let's see. Kespoldo is at the back. Um, there's an Ineos Grand Days rider. Let's hope it's not Ethan Hater. And if we look back at our poll, oh, here we go. Here we go. One kilometer to the intermediate sprint, and we're getting movements here. We're getting movements. Groupama FTJ making a move at the front. And who is that? Who is that? I think it's Quinton Pache, potentially. And a Jumbo Visma rider marking that move as well. I think it might have been. Is it Christophe Laporte? Is Christophe Laporte up here? Yeah, it is Laporte. Laporte has made it up. So Laporte could be a rider for the win. Laporte could be sneaking another victory here. 42% of you are thinking it could be his teammate. Well, we're not taking the victory. 8% of you believing um, it could be uh, Ethan Hater. 22% of you, Mass Pillarson. Trek is afraid we really need to do something here as there's just movement at the front here. Intermarché moving. Coffee is moving as well. So we're getting... Our questions answered why we saw Kofidis working before. We were saying, are they confused? No, they are certainly not. But here we go. Here we go. Bogodo is attacking now. Bogodo, a rider I didn't know existed before this Paris Nice. He has gapped the other riders. And let's just get a screenshot of that. Because that is a huge gap uh, in terms of proportional uh, proportional remaining of the stage it's gonna be interesting this very very interesting uh what will happen there's gonna be a flurry of attacks that's for sure we were hoping to see a, a bit of fireworks here it's been a quite of a uh uh stale stage really it hasn't quite lived up to the excitement that could have potentially have happened but total energies looking potentially to get some glory here in former stage but uh, Laporte is determined not to let his French countrymen up the road on that beautiful specialized tarmac SL7 uh, but we are getting movements from the peloton here behind them AG2R Citroen look like they're not going to give up this stage victory and let it disappear up the road so our teams are a lot more alert than they were on the similar climb that we had on stage one um, to this but uh, yeah, the intermediate sprint ta is uh, taken there by a bo uh, by the rider. Laporte is not following the Total Energies rider here. So they're all looking around and this is favoring the Total Energies rider. Is it going to be them? Is it going to be him taking the first victory uh, as opposed to Peter Scan, who I happen to see today? Let's just remind ourselves of that. 8.3 kilometers to go now. And uh, this is not good for um, 
and a potential mess. Pilsen all Wout Van Aert victory. Christophe Laporte doing a solid, solid ride. But uh, uh, Coffee Dies are looking to close the gap here to the Total Energies rider. Christophe Laporte riding second wheel. Wout Van Aert fourth wheel. Ineos Grandiers have a rider in there. Is it Daniel Martinez? Is it Adam Yates? Or is it Ethan Hayter potentially getting a World Tour victory? The young man who's been all conquering last year and formidable on the track as well. And let's not forget, 7.8 kilometers. It's really coming towards the pointy end of the stage. This Total Energies rider is on for potentially what could be the biggest win of his career so far. 36 likes. If you haven't already, smash that like button. Let's try and get to 50 likes uh, to, on today's stream. And, um, oh, he nearly overcooked it there. Uh, le nearly losing his bike there on the descent, but managed to save it. 60 people w were watching. Great to have you all here. If you haven't already, hit the like button. Uh, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. To Let's try and grow this channel to 1,000 subscribers. But... Nevertheless, Milan San Remo coming up next week. A lot of these riders looking to um, bolster their form for that. And as I say 60, there are 70 now. So 10 of you just joining there. Thank you for joining. Seven kilometers to go. Do get involved in the chat. It is a very exciting chat. So many familiar names in the chat. Make sure to vote as well. We're coming up to 60 votes in the the poll uh, Pierre Latour for the win um, unfortunately it's not Pierre Latour but we are getting a counter move here quick step alpha vinyl in there Bahrain victorious Groupama FTJ can't quite see who the riders are Yombo Visma in there as well and it does look like the white jersey who is wearing the white jersey right now mm, bonus point if you can tell me who was wearing the white jersey uh, Mess Pillows and can he potentially react to any of these moves? Jasper Stuyven, those two, of course, formidable all conquering classic riders. Um, Jasper Stuyven, well, talking about Milan San Remo, the former, uh, the the defending champion of Milan San Remo. Quick start out for Mino trying to close this gap. TBO is saying it, he thinks it's Mari van Sevenant. It could be. Movie star. Matteo Jorgensen it is, the rider who finished third yesterday, currently sitting in 14th place. So Ineos Grande is up there, but now they are looking at each other. No one's picking up the chase here. And yeah, we see this time and time again. No one's willing to commit. We don't often see it from a favorites group. It normally is from a breakaway group. But yeah, maybe this is when Sun Kaonison should have attacked, not early on. He should have just kept his powder dry for a few more kilometers, but... Yeah, the French rider, um, let's just butcher his name once again. Um, he is at the front, took the intermediate sprint, of course. But it doesn't look like we are going to have a, a victory from this main group. Um, so anyone who's pressed other, looks like you are very, uh, you can be very smug about your choice right now. Um, other, 32% of you picked other. 42% of you uh, favored Wat Van Aert. 15 seconds now. He's building it up. Guys, what are you doing? You're letting the stage victory uh, disappear up the road. Guys, this is it. You've just let go a victory. A very, very easy victory if you're, you're Trek Sick Afraid. All that work for nothing. Guys, what is this about? But uh, 4.9 kilometers, it looks like it's going to be a famous victory. We always love seeing the underdog take a victory, and it is going to be Total Energies winning a stage. Not with Peter Sagan, with a French rider. Who had thought it? But Ineos Grandes looks like they are reluctantly taking the chase up with Omar Freire, the Spanish national champion, looking to drive the pace here. But is it all too late here? 18 seconds. They don't look committed to this chase. And guys, you've got 4.4 kilometers until you are on the team buses. So why not just put it all on the line here? If you've got Ethan H in here in your screen days, you are silly. But is it because everyone knows what Van Aert potentially is the strongest rider? Or Mess Pilsen? Uh, there was a bit of a kick on that stage victory on stage 3, if we're not mistaken. Um, yeah, it was stage 3, wasn't it? But Checker Sigafredo reluctantly come to the front again. But is it all too late? I think it might be. Four kilometers to go for the rider at the front. And uh, yeah, guys, this is definitely going to be a missed opportunity for Trek Sofredo to double their 
the Machu Bogado. I just got the correct pronunciation from someone who can pronounce French things. Machu Bogado, the um, the rider. We did speak about him um, a few days ago on the chat. Um, yeah, Alexa and uh, Ondar is saying hate it when the peloton is so passive. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, yeah, it's a shame, but let's just look up Matteo Bogado, who looks like he's going to take a famous victory here. Um, so, Bogado, yeah, spelling it, it's a bit hard. Matteo Bogado, trying to get him up in pro cycling stats, I believe a lot of people are doing the exact same thing. But, if I could actually spell his name, nonetheless... <laughs> That aside, I will get you some information on him. Um, but yeah, Trek Segafredo put so much energy in and they've just let it go up the road. Why was no one marking him? You have Jasper Stuyven in there. You've got Mess Pilsen in there. Come on, guys. They know how to climb. They've proven that. It wasn't a all-conquering climb. It wasn't a, uh, a tour de, a de, a Col de Torini that we're seeing tomorrow. So, uh, just absolutely strange team tactics from a lot of the teams. And Israel Premier Tech, where are you? I'm kidding. There's only one rider left, Ugo Ul, if he's even in here anymore. But uh, Mathieu Bogado, what do we know about him? Of course, he's the teammate of Antinou Turgis. He's the teammate of uh, Pierre Latour, who's currently sitting third in the GC. But Yomba Visma are trying to make a move for it. Christophe Laporte, why did you let him disappear up the road? Um, zero victories for Mathieu Bogado. So, yes, he's 23 years old. Why not let... Why should we not see him take a victory here? It would be great to have his first victory be a World Tour victory, that's for sure. Um, but he's ridden with Total Energy since 2019. And, um, yeah... 23 years old, good rider it seems, it just needs to live up to the potential. Um, yeah, we'll see if he can hold it here. I'm just trying to see if I can bring you any extra results. 1.1, 1.7 kilometers is all that separates him from his first stage victory. Come on, monsieur. Come on. Allez, allez, allez. Do it for Viva la France. Get the second French stage victory here today. But what we not. And Mess Pilsen potentially could be doing something. His countryman Christophe Laporte could potentially deny him of a victory here as well. So it's all still to play for here. He has to do. He has to keep pedaling. And you hate to see. I hope he doesn't look back. I hope he just keeps going like flat out here. Does his best ever. Um, best ever. Okay, I'm trying to try and get some some interesting results, but I can't quite get a junior result here. But Macho Bogado, that is a name we have not said on the channel many times. Actually, I think this is the second time on any stream we've mentioned him. So Macho Bogado, we salute you and 83 of us in the in the chat. If you haven't already hit the like button, great to have you all here. The peloton on breathing down this French rider's neck. It, this is not good to see for him. He just needs to keep calm. Pedal. Go full throttle here. There's nothing to lose for him. Nothing. Allez, 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 monsieur. Bogado. Um, and, uh, yeah, if you're wondering why there's a Matteo, another Matteo on our screens. Met him today. Absolutely delightful guy. There will be a video tomorrow on him. So hit the subscribe button. He's got 300 meters to go. Come on. Come on. Come on, Matteo. Come on. Do it. Do it. Do it. But the peloton behind him are breathing down his neck. Trek Fredo are coming. Jasper Stoyven is leading out Mess Pillars. And Mess Pillars is coming. While Bernard is looking in the prime position here. It looks like Matteo Bogado is going to get caught here before the finish. Is he going to hold it? Yes, he does. Matteo Bogado. He takes the victory ahead of Mass Pillars and Walvenon. Solid ride there from Matteo Bogado. Absolutely speechless. What a heroic victory there for the underdog. He just pips. He just pips uh, Walvenon and Mass Pillars. The chances there will rue um, uh, Trek Segafredo there. Trek Segafredo, Yombo Visma. You could have both worked more there to catch him, but. What a delightful victory there. Wow, Mathieu, 
Macho Bogado, we salute you. What an absolutely final uh, picture there. Let's just get that final image on the screen. Wow, 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 monsieur. We salute you. What a victory there for the French rider. Second French victory of the stage and his first victory. And uh, yeah, Total Energies is this the first World Tour victory of the year? I believe so because Peter Sagan hasn't yet delivered. And yeah, wow. That is phenomenal riding there. We love to see the underdog win. Why would we watch if it isn't if we just see the same riders win again and again it gets a bit uh, boring but uh, yeah if you haven't already hit the subscribe button your name will flash up on the screen and uh, good things will come of course Matteo Trantin we will have a video about him tomorrow and um, yeah we will also stream tomorrow of course tomorrow I will be on the start of the race so that will be interesting see if I can blag my way in to get an interview from some rider um, but it is very hard with this uh, current regulations. 90 of us in the chat. So great to have you all here. Um, make sure to hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel as we try and grow this channel to a thousand subscribers. And hopefully we can do that before the Giro this year. But uh, yeah, let's. we will wait for the top 10. There won't really be any changes in the um, in the GC, we'll, we'll think. But wow, Monsieur Bogado. What a famous victory from him and Total Energies. Um, just incredible. Uh, love to see the underdog uh, beat the favorites. What a victory. What a victory. That is something he's going to remember for a long time. Total Energies are going to remember that for a long time. And uh, what an incredible uh, Total uh, total energies. I'm just forgetting how to spell total energies. Uh, but yeah, formidable victory there from them. Get they get a world tour victory and allez, allez, mature, mature, uh, mature. So from one mature to another mature, what a delight! But uh, yeah, we'll get you the top ten confirmation of the stage as well. What an incredible victory from him. He just collapses at the end of the stage. Got absolutely nothing left. Just gets congratulated by his team leader, uh, Pierre Latour. What more can you say? Mels Pilsen and Wout Van Aert, those two will rue this opportunity. This could have been a stage victory for them. But anyways, <laughs> anyways, lol. Courtesy of... Um, the organizers here so we will have the top 10 for us now and then i will shoot off i will do the the um, podcast if you haven't already make sure to check out the cycling dane podcast as well give that some love wherever on apple podcast give it five stars if you believe um i believe it's worth it we've got plenty of pro interviews on there plenty of funny things on there as well but of course i don't need to tell you that you know that already so, top 10 stage of stage 6. Where did that actually disappear to? Top 10 of stage 6. Paris Nice, the 80th edition. What a cracking little race that was. Great to have another subscriber there. Let's just see who that was. It was uh, Upik TR Vlog. Great to have you here with us. Joining the Cycling Dane Extra community. But, here we go. Matteo Burgado. A name we haven't mentioned before as a winner because this is his first victory as a pro. Mess Pilsen in second place. The Dane, unfortunately, not taking the victory. What we're not. Then we have got Guillaume, um, the young rider. Fourth place. What a solo ride from him as well. The 21 year old Brian Kokar, fifth place. Ooh, that was who they were riding for, Kofidis. We just got that question answered. Uh, Lucas Mezgech for Bike Exchange. Jaco also in here. And then Ivan Gatia, Garcia Cortina for Movie Star. And then Dorian Godon, who we saw down, I believe, early on. Florence Seneschal, then uh, Quick Step Alpha Vinyl Rider. And Lucas Masato, also for BNB. I think it was BNB. 
So that is very, very interesting to see what will happen in the next stages. Of course, let's just get up what's going to happen tomorrow to entice you to come back to the Cycling Dane Extra channel and sit here with me. I absolutely think it's incredible to have so many of you here on a channel that is fairly small compared to our main channel. But yeah, I thank every single one of you for coming and joining, checking out what's going on. I believe I will be alone tomorrow as well as... Um, Ewan and Jack are unfortunately occupied. Well, maybe we can have Jack. I'll ask Jack and see if he wants to be a part of tomorrow's Queen stage. But it could be a bit um, um, all over the place uh, tomorrow because uh, of that first stage uh, of of getting down to the start of the stage. I will have to see how I do that. And to keep it interesting, the final stage again starts and finishes in nice i'll make sure to be there at the start once again they're gonna get be sick of my face and then uh we will be live from the cold airs so that that will be a neat little nugget to look forward to but anyways here is the stage for tomorrow very very interesting queen stage of course danny martinez took the victory in 2019 he is in the race um is currently um we are well it's 156 kilometers long from nice to the col de torini and the finishing is 1605 meters the climb of course 15.2 kilometers average is 7.2 percent catch rise one climb and this definitely should separate the gc a bit more and potentially we could see roglic crack but don't hold your breath on that so that's basically it for today's stream so if you haven't already, make sure to hit the like button. I'll just check what we are before we finish. Um, we are currently on... Um, um, thanks off to the... Oh, yeah, in terms of uh, uh, Terreno Adriatico. Uh, we'll just see how we're doing there as well. I think we are going to get a Tadip Gacho victory. Uh, that's for sure, um, potentially today. But um, I'm not sure if my throat can actually take another one uh, I, I need to record the podcast as well i forgot to do that yesterday so apologies for that but treno adriatico um what have we got it's going to be an interesting stage today of course tadi bagaccia has his grasp on that jersey 22.4 kilometers left and um yeah are we gonna go for Torino? do we want to talk about Torino? um yeah it's uh tempting now do we want to talk about Torino? 21.1 22.22 22 kilometers left that is probably half an hour more of chit chat from my side so um um well there's 43 of you now so i'll quickly see if none of you want to listen to me talk about Torino. um yeah out in front in Torino adriatico um well we might as well if if you don't want to hear about Torino, disappear and say thank you and goodbye, because uh, that will tell me that no one wants to hear about Torino. But there are 43 of you still here, so that means that I think 43 of you will probably want to hear about Torino. So um, yeah, I'll set it up quickly and then we'll talk about Torino again, uh, as that seems to be our tradition now. So uh, let's just get Torino up and running. Um, feel sorry for my girlfriend because she'll be locked in the bathroom for another half an hour so uh, yeah but um, here we go remember if you haven't seen that already met ter Tren, uh, Trentin today so that's quite funny that is the incentive to subscribe because there's a video coming up tomorrow about that so um, yeah but uh Anyways, we're close to the finish line in Torino Adriatico. We got a breakaway up the road, and it could potentially be a breakaway scenario here. So let's just uh, get the updated graphics from Pro Cycling Stats. If you haven't already, make sure to check out Pro Cycling Stats. Um, not actually affiliated to them in any way. I'm just a huge fan. I'm absolutely a Pro Cycling Stats addict, that's for sure. Uh, Bargui attacks apparently Bargui is he in yeah Bargui is in the front of the race so the teammate of 
uh, uh, Baguio, of course, a former winner of the Tour de la Manière. Remember him? Former stage victory uh, winner in the Tour de France. Uh, polka dot jersey winner. So much potential so early on, but doesn't look like he's going to live up to it. But anyways, we are back. Terreno Adriatico. Here we are. Less than 20 kilometers to go now. Benjamin Thomas, who was so aggressive yesterday as well, we think. Or was it Victor Lafay? I don't know. They are on this very steep climb now. And um, yeah, if you haven't already, make sure to check out that video on the main channel. Warren Bagui makes it up this very steep climb. Um, he looks like he will be joined by another French rider from another French team. Ben Benjamin Thomas. So um, yeah, we've got 44 of you here. So that must mean that you all want to hear this. So let's go for it. Um, 20.5 kilometers, 2.2 2 minutes and 17 seconds now. Warren Baggy on this very steep climb. Um, can he do it? Who knows, really? How steep is this climb? That is a big question. Remco Venepol, of course, one of the riders uh, we are asking questions about. Can he potentially unseat Tade Pogaccio? We will wait and see. Tade Pogaccio, of course, in supreme form winning UAE Tour and looking to replicate his 2021 season by also winning Torino Adriatico, even though the organizers look like they've somewhat designed an anti tarif Gacha course. But will it um, will it deter him from a victory? Probably not. Um, yeah, it, it will get interesting for sure. Um... So, um, yeah, and apologies to uh, anyone who was hoping to disappear off because uh, it looks like we have got 20.3 kilometers. And uh, Iolo Cometa are off the back with one of their riders. Um, um, so, interesting dynamic. They've come up over this climb. Very steep climb, but Warren Baggy is looking like he's going to be joined by Ben Thomas here. So that's going to be a good little duo here. He's waiting up. Can they go completely solid all out to try and uh, keep away from this? Um, keep away from the um, keep away from the peloton. And um, yeah, UAE team members, of course, controlling affairs in the peloton. Julian Philippe looking like he's going to move up. The world champion who lost out a bit. He could have been something, but ooh, this climb is doing so much damage to what potentially is a somewhat sleepy peloton. Um, so yeah, that we're going to see some riders go out the back. Ben Swift, the national champion from Great Britain, is going out the back. So... Yeah, this is um this is going to be interesting. Um So um yeah, we're going to see some of the big guys crack on this very steep climb. Of course, they have still got they still are finishing on a climb today. So this is going to be interesting if they can do anything but uh Rafa Maika is working at the front, the teammate of Matteo Trentin, who of course is going to appear on the channel tomorrow. So uh, hit the subscribe button. Oh my goodness, that was such a weird plug. But Jonas Bingo got on the wheel of uh, um, uh, Tade Bagacha. Can Jonas Bingo got potentially do something here? Could the Dane um, do something and win potentially his first World Tour stage race? That remains to be seen, but we are coming to some very narrow streets, courtesy of this preview by the the breakaway group. So this is going to be very interesting. If this will potentially catch some riders out in the front, we have got Nelson Oliveira, uh, uh, Valencia Respredo, who I'm not sure if that is the bro John uh, brother of Jonathan. Uh, so. Uh, and also an Alpsen Phoenix rider in there. Astana also has a rider in there. I just missed who it was. So, um, yeah, it's really the sharp end of the peloton right now. But they are, of course, behind the French duo of Warren Baggy. I'm a huge Warren Baggy fan. And uh, Benjamin Thomas riding for Ikea Samsic. So, um, can these two riders do anything? Can Warren Baggy get his first World Tour victory since when? Bonus point for anyone who can name it. I will give you a moment 
to name the last time he won a World Tour race, and I can unveil it now. It is actually his 2017 victory in the Tour de France, stage 18. So, has been a long wait, four years. Warren Buggy, what has happened to him? Uh, 18.5 kilometers to go now. We are coming into this very narrow street. Will we potentially see a bottleneck from the peloton? That remains to be seen. We almost have 50 people back on the channel, so that's good to see. Um, yeah, Treno Adriatico, can they do anything here? Um, Movie Star are looking to try and do something as well. Movie Star have been a bit blunt in terms of getting victories. We've seen so much waste from them, of course. If you are just joining, we aren't looking at Paris Nice anymore. That was won by Matteo Burgado. Um, famous victory there for the Total Energies team. But um, Trek Segafredo are going out the back here in terms of their breakaway. So um, can Julian Philippe potentially pounce here? Couldn't we see Tadej Bogacha get more seconds of time on his some of his rivals? So... Ben Thomas guiding him and Warren McGee down this um, this uh, descent. So, yeah, do we think Warren McGee? We I think it's time for a new poll. That is what I hear from you guys. So, uh, what have we got here? Um, since the tour of 2017, yeah, TV, you got it right. Or are you gonna count the nationals? No, not counting the nationals. Um, but Rafa Maika is in control here. Julian Philippe looks like he's thinking about doing an attack here at the front. Uh, what are we saying here? You did well, Scott. We understand if your voice is tired. Thank you. No, I'm still here. I'm still here. I uh, feel sorry for my girlfriend who's being trapped in the toilet right now. So currently a kidnapping is going underway here, uh, courtesy of the Cycling Dane Extra. Uh, but nevertheless, Rafa Maika is sweeping up some of the breakaway riders here from early on. And uh, we can just see there the blue jersey of, uh, I was about to say what we're not, of Tare Pogaccia there. Solid rider, absolutely the best of the best right now when it comes to cycling. Is there anyone who can uh, deny him a third Tour de France victory in a row? I would throw the names of Primoz Roglic and... Uh, uh, Jonas Vingegaard in there, so um, yeah, remains to be seen. But 16.7 kilometers to go now. We are coming to the finish of the race. So it's going to be interesting to see if anything can happen. Rafa Maika is leading the charge. They are looking like they're ramping it up. 2 minutes and 11 seconds is the deficit here. It has been around this for a long time, so... I don't actually think they're going to catch the breakaway. I think it is going to be a breakaway stage victory. Thomas, Tom Skoyens, we just see at the back there. Friend of the channel as well. The Latvian national champion has been on the channel twice, I believe. Yeah, twice. But at the front, the two uh, Belgian riders, have, uh, French riders have been uh, brought back. Courtesy of Simone Velasco, uh, Velasco, the Astana rider. Nilsson Oliveira in there as well. They are smelling the potential of a Torreno victory here. So this is going to be interesting. Are we going to see a victory from this break group? And let's just remind ourselves of who's in that group. Um, Warren Bagui. I would love to see Warren Bagui take the victory. Ben Thomas. Of course, those two riders look to escape. Alphys in Phoenix are up there as well. Movie Star have a rider. And... Um, yeah, could be very interesting uh, to see what will happen. Can we see something here? Um, can we see something outrageous happen from Warren Begui? We've seen already a French Pro Continental team uh, win in one World Tour race today. So we saw two UAE Team Emirates riders winning yesterday, Brendan McNulty and Tarek Bogacic. So could that follow the trend here? Could, oh, actually, though, there's a Total Energies rider in here. So we could potentially have a double up from another team. Um, 20th of March, mark the day. Dwarf Dwarf Landeren and Macho van der Poel's comeback. <sighs> Thanks for that little nugget there, uh, TBO. Uh, it will be interesting to see how he will do. 40 of you here, so if you haven't already, hit the like button. Let's see if we can beat our 81 target. We're on cu currently 47, so we're three likes away from 50. And, uh, yeah, if you haven't already, hit the smash that like button as you, uh, more, more.
famous YouTubers would say. Um, let's try and get as close as we can to a thousand subscribers before the Giro d'Italia. Yeah, we're on f uh, 571, so we've actually gone up by 16 since I started the stream. So, no, actually more. Uh, nearly 20 subscribers uh, increased there. So uh, thanks every single one of you who have subscribed to the channel so far. UAE team members are in control of uh, of the the bunch. 13.7 kilometers to go. Still two minutes and eight seconds. So we have to think this is going to be a uh, stage victory for the bunch. So I think uh, not the bunch for the breakaway. So I think we should just rep and we should just. Um, show that in terms of our current poll as well because our poll is far out of date right now so i've ended the poll and uh, you glorious people have just taken us this stream our little community up to 50 likes and remember i did say yesterday or yeah yesterday we are going to have a competition coming up and <coughs> oh that last of the dry throat we are well actually i could get a bottle of water here bang like magic bottle of water We have got a competition coming up this week. If I can finish the video on the channel, um, maybe it'll be ready. Uh, maybe it'll be ready on Monday. Actually, I think Monday is more realistic. So Monday, main channel. Make sure to check out there, and uh, we will have the competition there for sure. But anyways, twelve point seven kilometers, two minutes and seven seconds. Looks inevitable. It's going to be. A breakaway victory here and uh, it's quite a big it's a big big group here we have in this breakaway group so it's it's gonna be a big pick and choosing here who do I put in the poll we have seven riders in this no I think we have more actually I think because there's a quick step alpha vinyl rider in there as well so this is gonna be a hard choice Valtin Ferron who of course had a bit of a uh, had a bit of an attack yesterday. It is Jonathan Respredo, um, the Colombian rider. Could we potentially see a Colombian victory here? Uh, but let's get some names in that poll so we can get some um, guessing, and we'll laugh at ourselves at the end of the stage, as always, or during sometimes for me. So um, great to have Sarah here as well, staying for the extra action. Great to have all of you. 40, 41 of you staying here for Torino Adriatico. Um, we're giving some love to Torino. And uh, yeah, a lot of you have already subscribed today. So thank you for that. And hit the like button as well. So, competition on Monday. That was the little plug. 11.4 kilometers to go. 2 minutes and 7 seconds. So uh, it's all still to play for here in the group. Uh, movie star at the front now trying to get away with Nelson Oliveira, a Portuguese writer who has of course tried to many times uh, well he's been such a solid consistent time trial writer uh, previously so yeah but anyways me stopping getting distracted let's get this name of writers in the poll I'm going to be a bit biased put uh, Warren Baggy win the stage I'm going to put Warren Baggy in there uh, Warren Baggy, Bagil, uh, Ben Thomas because he was so active yesterday. Who is that quick step rider? Who is the quick step rider? I'll put the quick step rider in there because he looks quite um, well rested. And yeah, no, actually, he's going out of the back. Nelson Oliveira should be the other rider. Uh, of course, we only have four options so. Uh, oh, it's Ballerini. Ooh, no, I don't think he's he'll take it. It's Ballerini. But there you go. You've got your options now. Ben Thomas, Warren Baggy. Hmm. Maurice could have been a good shout as well. The Belgian rider for Alpecin Phoenix. But get involved in the chat. And um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Zara saying that magical bottle of water yeah it just appears bang it appeared again but yeah we're getting very very close to the finish now we're getting a bit of movement here it looks like tim wellens we always know tim wellens likes a good attack 
10.6 kilometers to go. It's a bit late for Tim Wellens to attack. But uh, can he potentially make up a few seconds in the GC? Jonas Bingegor is in there as well. Tom Skoyenj we can see in the photo or in the in in the screen. And uh, yeah, Team Bike Exchange, what are they doing here? Have they got a Michael Matthews? I don't even know. Of course, we, we did a Torino preview. Yeah, that was with you and I. And of course, Paris Nice, we did. Uh, that was with me and Graham Wilgus of the Bradley Wiggins podcast. And then uh, the other preview was Thara Bianchi with Jack. So three previews, three different co-hosts. So that was quite funny. But Tim Wellens is getting a bit of a gap between him and the Peloton. This wouldn't really worry me if I was the Peloton. Um, but Michael Matthews is in the Bike Exchange team. Uh, Matteo Sobrero as well, the rider who moved from Astana last year. But uh, yeah, they're just bringing him back. Uh, Davide Formula just shakes his head. Uh, AG to our Citroen covering that as well. It looks like they might counter this move. Two minutes and three seconds is that advantage. So I think they well and truly know that this day is going to belong to the breakaway. Um, they're looking at each other. And mm, yeah, I mean, you can do this with 10k to go. But you shouldn't really. Because if the peloton start wrapping, ramping it up here. And you are going about 32 kilometers an hour because none of you want to commit to the chase could be a bit uh bit bad here so um yeah we'll have to wait and see if it well what happens here um but uh it is a very good it is a very good scenario for the breakaway riders that's for sure. Iolo Cometa as well. Who is the Iolo Cometa rider? Um, that is a question. What are we saying here? Um, 11 riders to combat podiums. Yeah, that is true. Ricky's podium. Uh, yeah, guys, if you haven't already, comment who you think is going to win or who, who your podium is going to be. I can comment as well. I think Warren Bagheel uh, Warren will win. Um... I hope. Um, but Julien Philippe, is he missing an opportunity here? And uh, yeah, shame really. So um, 9.5 kilometers to go. One minute and 54 seconds. So they've taken away 10 seconds already in the space of 500 meters. So this is why like, they can't let up now. Valesco, the Italian rider, he looks like he is committing a bit to this this very sluggish um, ride now. But uh, Davide Ballerini has been distanced now. Um, so I don't think the quick step alpha vinyl rider will feature here at the pointy end of the race victory. But still 9.4 kilometers to go. Still is fairly interesting uh, to see what will actually happen um out of this group it, yeah we won't get the showdown between or well, we could potentially but not for the victory between Jonas Vingegaard and uh Tare uh, Pogaccia or Remco Venepo but uh it looks like the Iolo Cometa rider is uh, starting to suffer just in the back end of the group uh Warren Bagui is rocking side to side is that just for the cameras we don't know or is he actually suffering um Warren Bagui not really being the rider that we know, we, well, the great potential we saw in 2017. So um, that's a bit of a shame. But yeah, riding for Akhil Samsung now, he's been good service for Nairo Quintana in the past. But it looks like Valesco is just p cranking the pace here, cranking it up here. Movie star uh, Nelson Oliveira seems somewhat unfazed by this pace. Two canyons with a. Uh, Willia bike at the front end of the race now. Um, yeah, takers for race winners in terms of your, uh, well, our poll right now. What have we got? We got Ben Thomas, 38% of you, tied with 38% of you saying other. So if you put other, do let us know in the comments who you think is going to be that victory, uh, that winner. So this is very, very interesting. Uh, to see who of these riders, of course, uh, breakaways can always be a bit of a, a roll of the dice. And 
yeah, Alpes and Phoenix, they are looking to take a second Torino Adriatico victory this year. Of course, they're, I think they took one in, did they take one last year? Of course they did. They took two with Macho Van Der Poel. Was it two? Yeah, it was two. It was two. Um, but no Macho Van Der Poel right now. Uh, they come to the top, crest the top of the climb. There's two Aeolo Cometa riders in here. We're seeing double. There's two Aeolo Cometa riders. So Aeolo Cometa, what are you doing? You should be using your numbers here. If you have the power. Uh, it is... Uh, Vincenzo Albanese and Francesco Gavazzini. Gavazzini. Gavazzi. Um, Gavazzi, I would call a bit more of a sprint. Well, he was. I thought he was more of a sprint. Of course, he's ridden for Astana. He's ridden for Lampre. He's 37 years old. Uh, taking 13 pro victories already. His last victory, although, was back in 2019. Uh, his last World Tour victory was back in... 2011 so yeah 11 years ago so that puts it in perspective the drought but Evenepoel Remco Evenepoel is attacking that move being marked by Tadej Pogacar and Jonas Vingol very hard so yeah Tadej Pogacar and Jonas Vingol moving quickly onto Remco Evenepoel's wheel so excellent movement there from Renko Venepo. He gets a very elite trio here with himself, Jonas Vingo and Tadej Gacha at the front of the race now. So this has just um, put some blisters into the race. Will these three riders commit to this? Who knows? But 7.7 .7 kilometers to go now. This is going to be interesting. Finally, we get a bit of action from the favorites group. We didn't see any action in Paranese, which was a bit annoying. But 7.5 kilometers is all that we have. Uh, for these riders and Remco Venable is driving it here. Jonas Vingegaard, what a move from him. He was latched onto anything that Tadej Pogacar did in the Tour de France last year and he's he is uh, definitely showing the marking duties like he did in the Basque, Tour of the Basque Country. So Jonas Vingegaard will see he's got formidable form already. Uh, was he a bit caught out yesterday in where he was? We saw him just bra dragging back riders. But uh, Remco Venepol versus Tadej Pogacar. It, yeah, round two, if you will. Well, not really, but uh, another chapter to this very young rivalry, potentially. Theo Gegenhardt looks to drag these three riders back. He is one of the riders who's lost out here, the former Giro d'Italia winner. The Giro that many people said was Remco Venepol's. But Remco Venepol, of course, crashed in Il Lombardia. So uh, at the front, we've got Theo Gegenhardt. Uh, Theo Gegenhardt, no, we haven't. Uh, uh, Tadej Bagaccia. Um, Jonas Vingegaard. Gianluca Brambilla in this move as well. Jonas Vingegaard, Remco Venepo. Three superstars of the respective nations. And uh, yeah, this will be interesting. 6.4 kilometers to go for the break. And now we can see this is what happens. Don't look up. Don't. Don't uh, look around, Breakaway. You, your lead has been cut in half in the last four kilometers. And now you've got the three best riders in the race roaring down the road. And this is not binding well for them. They'll have to do something. Waran Bagui, you have to lift the pace now. Ben Tomar, you have to leave the pace. The sports directors w should be in the radio now saying, guys, you need to go, you need to go. Uh, you've got the three fastest riders in the race coming up the road. And you've got a peloton hunting as well. So this is not good, guys. This is not good. Oh. <laughs> as I say that, Jonas Vingegaard, Remco Venepol and Tadej Pogacar missed the turning. They missed the turning. Oh, that's a shame. They went the wrong way. They went the wrong way on the road. Um, so a uh, bit of a shame there for the three that looked like they were going to get a huge advantage on the peloton. They've just <laughs> turned the wrong way on the road. So they're going to wait for him. They're going to wait for them, I think. Um, but, um, yeah, what a odd situation there. The three riders just missing out on the, the wrong turning there. Jonas Bingo, Tadej Pogacar, and... Um, Remco Venepol, the three riders went the wrong way, so bit of a shame really, I think they're just going to set up, yeah, Tadej Pogacar, Jonas Vingo, they quickly join the favourites group there, but
But yeah, that advantage they had nullified there. Completely nullified. <laughs> what a s yeah, that that was weird. Very, very weird. We can all appreciate that, you know, that little moment. But yeah, well, we digress. We turn our, our focus to the front of the race. Uh, Sarah voting for Jonas Vingo. Unfortunately, it's not going to be his day, it looks like. But uh, one point, yeah, well, now the uh, breakaway can breathe a bit more. 5.6 kilometers to go. And uh, yeah, that was unusual. Uh, humble there by the wrong turn, but Tadej Pogacar, that extra adrenaline there is just kicking in for him. And uh, yeah, they really need to up the pace here. They need to up the pace. Uh, Valesco knows this. Nelson Oliveira knows it. They know that the rampaging trio, Pogaccia, Ivanapol, and Vingegaard, they are potentially going to do something here with that extra adrenaline that just kicked in. So, uh, yeah, that was very, very unusual, to say the least. Um, what was that? What was that, guys? We can only speculate. What a weird incident in a in a fascinating race so 55 seconds um one uh war remco venipole has apparently been caught out because of that he is uh 15 seconds down so that's a shame if that's true we don't want to see riders lose time for no reason so that is going to be a bit of a shame if he loses time because of this. I hope they set up because that that's not really fair on uh, Remco Venipol. Um But uh, yeah, what a weird incident to say the least. <laughs> you <laughs> you think it's gonna be a normal uh, finish to the race for the favorites group, and then that happens. But 4.4 kilometers to go now. The lead is down to 51 seconds here. There is a 15 second gap between now Remco Venable and the main group. They are probably going to be playing the it's a race c card. So uh, Remco Venable looks like he could potentially fall down the GC ranking now at no fault. Well, it was a fault on his own, but a bit of bad luck that wasn't it was he isn't dropped because of racing. But um, yeah, that is a big shame. Big, big shame from Torino. Uh, you hate to see it. And uh, yeah, let's hope he gets back before they uh, finish. But 3.7 kilometers go at the front. We've got movement. We've got movement at the front. Um, that is just crazy scenes here at the Giro. Uh, at the, well, almost. Um, that was that was weird. Um, crazy scenes as Remco Venipol. I'm just updating Twitter as well, doing multiple jobs there. Um, and Jonas Vingo going the wrong way, uh, going the wrong. I think he's back. Remco Venipol is back in the group, it seems. Um, but 3.2 kilometers left at the front, but. It was not really what Remco Venipol wanted after that move, that really solid attack. It's definitely not uh, what what uh, he was expecting. So, uh, yeah, less than three kilometers to go for the breakaway. Warren Buggy is moving at the front here. Has he just been playing the poker game, not doing his share, his work at the front and really just um doing his best there to uh to uh yeah to um fool the other riders and Warren Buggy doing his best effort here it looks like he is going to take the victory if I'm honest I think this is going to be a win for Akea Samsic a second pro continental team a French continental team taking a victory in uh in a world tour race today so should be interesting um anyways said said again um great to have you here vera as well what happened basically remco venipol uh remco venipol tata Bogacha and uh jonas vingo went the wrong way and uh unfortunately he lost time because of it 
But uh, anyways, 2.6 kilometers, Warren Buggy at the front. Uh, ben Thomas is dropped well and truly. So he's not going to be doing anything about Warren Buggy, the former Tour de l'Avenir winner, former pocket jersey, jersey winner in uh, the Tour de France is... Um, He's rolling back the years, and it looks like he's going to take a famous victory here. Uh, action, absolutely formidable riding from him. Says five seconds of a lead, but it looks like it's going to be more. Uh, Buggy is going to take his first victory since 2017. Potentially, he is on some good form. 2.5 kilometers of Lelesco, Simone Valesco, and the Belgian rider are absolutely painted to the floor now. So... It's not going to happen for these guys. It's going to be another pro-continental French race victory. And uh, yeah, what a solid ride from the Ikea Samsic star. Uh, can he potentially have a, a solid season this year? It would be good to see. And uh, yeah, if you haven't already, make sure to hit the like button as Warren Bagui would insert, uh, would tell you to do so. 2.3 kilometers. And uh, all still to play for, that's for sure. Um, yeah. Just crazy scenes, really. Crazy scenes. Uh, there. Crazy, crazy scenes. If you want to see the clip of um, what happened in uh, in the to Remco and Vinopol and so forth. I implore you to go onto our Twitter. I'll share the link between you guys. And uh, then you can see that. So, uh, yeah. I can't see the race just listening to Scott. Yeah, okay. So, if you want to see the cl the weird, bizarre clip that we saw, there you go. It's on the Twitter now. It'll probably be taken down later on. So, enjoy it while it lasts. 1.9 kilometers to go. 1.8 kilometers to go for Warren Baggy. It looks like he's going to roll back the years. 23 seconds of an advantage now. It's going to be a famous victory for for these guys, uh, for these guys for Akea Samsic. So, uh, yeah, this will be good to see. Um, but yeah, incredible, really, incredible. So, uh, one point five kilometers to go, one point four twenty five seconds, one minute to the favorites group. So that's kind of solidified. Um, and yeah, it is what it is, really. It is what it is. And let's hope Rimko Venipol isn't too angry about what happened today. And, uh, yeah, could, could do something here later on in the race. But, uh, Warren Baggy coming up to the finish towards it, coming close to the last one kilometer. I am very fatigued now as well. I think you are as well. And uh, another day of racing, but what a day it has been. And uh, in terms of uh, people who voted for Warren Buggy, 29% of you out of the 17 who have voted. We are how close to our goal? We still are missing. We're on 55, so if you haven't already, hit the like button. Get us up to that 81. Subscribe if you haven't already to the Cycling Date Extra as well. Let's try and get as close as we can to 1,000 before the Giro d'Italia. Under the nine, uh, under the one kilometer to go banner, and uh, yeah, uh, whew, it's been a long day. So, yeah, Bagheel, eight hundred meters to go, twenty four seconds. Um. Yeah, it'll be a welcome victory, as we said. First tour, first World Tour victory since 2017. So it's been a long time in the wait for the former Tour de l'Avenir winner. And uh, yeah, it really is a good day for him uh, in terms of a victory. So much potential. He was all conquering in the Tour de l'Avenir edition. He had won the points, the polka dot and the yellow jersey. Really Eddie Merck-esque. Many people touted this rider as being the next, well, the, yeah, the next French winner of the Tour de France. But it looks like that's not going to happen. Um, yeah, it really does look like the finale in Siena. Good call there, Tibio. So, uh, yeah, under 500 meters to go. Looks like it is going to be a victory for Akea Samsik and Warren Baggy. And, uh, yeah. Um...
So, yeah, Warren Magui, absolutely incredible here. He is riding up to the finish, going to take a victory. And, uh, yeah, what more can we say? Great victory, first victory. But, uh, yeah, Valeshko and the other riders are breathing down his neck. They are on 300. He looks back. It is going to be a victory for him. Absolutely incredible. First victory it's going to be since 2017. So, uh, what more can we say about him? Let's hope he has a bit of a resurgence this year. Um, so, yeah, here we go. Comes up to the finish line. He's going to... Is he going to salute? Yeah, he's going to... Hands in the air. What a victory there from Warren Buggy. Uh Yeah, S a long time in the wait. And uh, good for him. Good for Warren Buggy. So, uh, coming up to the minor placings, of course, we look at, towards the peloton as well. Uh, we'll see if any of them will have, uh, the favorites group, if you will, have uh, done anything. And uh, um, Velasco looks like he's going to get the podium finish. Um, that, yeah, here we come. The peloton looks like they're all favorites group finish all together, basically. So not much changes a uh, change for that. Uh, what what was going on there with words? Not much of a change there in the GC. So that is basically it for today. Thank you every single one of you for being here. I am quite tired now. I'm sure you are as well if you've been a part of this through the whole way. So thank you all for joining. It has been a blast as always. And uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And um, yeah, tomorrow, interesting stage because I will be at the start. There will be the Mateo Tintin video. And yeah, good things will come if you subscribe. So thanks every single one of you.